Jarash, Jordan, a story 10,000 years in the making, ravaged by war and earthquakes, a city built upon the clash of cultures and religions, of conquerors and hidden treasure, of gods and miracles. Abandoned for centuries, then rediscovered, where history and mystery converge. So what lies beneath the ancient ruined city? Follow me as I peel back the layers of brick and dust as we look for truth amongst the rubble of this once great city. Hello everyone, and welcome to another installment of 30th. In today's video, we will be focusing on the ancient ruins of Jarash in Jordan, well known as being the largest and best preserved example of Roman and Byzantine architecture outside of Italy. Jarash, or Garassa, is located 50 kilometers north of the capital of modern-day Amman and 60 kilometers north of Jesus Christ's supposed baptismal site. What makes Jarash fascinating is not only the grandeur and craftsmanship of the buildings and roadways that make this ancient city a popular tourist destination, but the collision of culture and religion found inside and beneath these wondrous structures. Due to its position along important trade routes between Syria, the Mediterranean, and the Transjordan, Jarash has seen its share of conflict and prosperity, having changed hands between the Greeks, Romans, Jews, and Muslims over the centuries each having built their monuments, churches, and temples over top of their predecessors, making it difficult for researchers to definitively determine who was there first and what the city looked like over 2,000 years ago. I was fortunate enough to visit Jarash recently and was able to observe firsthand some peculiar aspects that I believe point to the possibility that there is far more yet to be discovered under this ancient site. As I walked along the Cardo Maximus and into the Grand Courtyard, flanked by dozens of Corinthian columns, I noticed in some places the paving stones had shifted to reveal hollow empty space below. Although I was not able to see much more, when I stuck my arm in, I could not reach the bottom. Furthermore, there are several strange stairwells around the city, like this one, which I was told lead down to small storage rooms. As you can see, the doorways are very small and not really in line with this explanation, as they are barely large enough for a man to crawl through, let alone carry a load of goods for storage. It is possible that they are still partially buried, and are actually taller than they appear, but they would still be too narrow to accommodate a person carrying a load to pass through unimpeded. An unusual oversight and design in a city built with such meticulous attention to detail. As well, the Temple of Artemis contains another peculiar underground access point in the form of a shaft that once again is purported to have been used to lower grain for storage. An odd spot for this, given that the shaft is right in the middle of the vestibule of the temple, which would seem to contradict the importance of this place of worship. I found it curious that some of the buildings and underground entrances had been walled up by the Jordanian government, who claim that it is to preserve these structures, but I wondered, is that really why they had been closed off? If so, why has so little research been published as to what lies beyond these doorways and beneath them? Are they simply dusty, empty rooms, or is there more to the underbelly of this forgotten city than meets the eye? Jarash is yet another example of brick-on-brick -brick building, in which no mortar is used. This technique is found among many of the oldest structures around the world, such as the Great Pyramid of Giza, where the rock forms are cut so precisely that a sheet of paper cannot fit between them. This technique is no longer used today, but there are still modern-day examples, such as the Fort Prince of Wales, a star fort in Churchill, Manitoba, built in the 1700s, which is the topic of one of our first videos, where no mortar was used in the fort's original construction. The origins of Jarash is a contentious subject. Conflicting sources claim it was founded by the Greek king Alexander the Great in the 4th century BC, who supposedly settled retired Macedonian soldiers there, while some point to the Seleucid king Antioch IV as being the founder, as the city was formerly known as Antioch of the Chrysoris, while still others attribute Ptolemy II of Egypt for its founding. Archaeological excavations have unearthed human remains dating as far back as the Neolithic period, 7500 to 5500 BC. Strangely, these skulls are rare and found in only 12 other sites around the world. The intrigue continues as the number 12 appears yet again when in a 16th century census, Jarash was populated by 12 Muslim households after supposedly having been abandoned for nearly 500 years. Jarash also known by its ancient name Garasa, Gadara, or Garshu, is first mentioned in literature in the first century AD in the writings of Josephus, a Jewish historian, as being the place where Theodorus, the tyrant of Philadelphia, removed and hid his treasure in the temple of Zeus in Jerash.
Where his treasure was removed from and what exactly it was remains a mystery. The most common theory is that Theodorus' treasure was gold. However, in his work, Antiquities of the Jews, Josephus cryptically refers to the treasure as what he esteemed most precious. Theodorus would lose Jerash to the invading Hasmonean king of Judea, Alexander Janaeus, in 102 BC, who would in turn lose the city in 63 BC to Pompey the Great. Over 1,000 years later, in 1120 AD, during the Crusades, Zahir ad-Din Togtekin of Damascus had control of Jerash and ordered 40 of his men to convert the Temple of Artemis into a fortress. Only one year later, it was captured and demolished by King Baldwin of Jerusalem, at which point the Crusaders immediately abandoned Jerash. There is no mention of the treasure after Janaeus' reign. Theodorus, or Nathaniel in Hebrew, the brother of Cleopatra VII, the last ruler of Egypt before it was annexed into Rome, is speculated to have married one of Mary Magdalene's sisters. It is also speculated that at this wedding, which Jesus and his disciples were invited to and did attend, that the miracle of Cana of Galilee occurred, in which Jesus turned water into wine. The location of the church that the wedding took place is a mere 70 kilometers northwest of Jerash. Although my research is derived chiefly from translations of Josephus' work, it is interesting to note the contradictions in this timeline. Theodorus and Janaeus' interactions in Jerash were a full century before the birth of Christ. Yet Theodorus married Jesus' sister and had interactions with Jesus himself, as referenced from the Bible, John chapters 147 through chapter 2 2. Theodorus supposedly died in the year 80 AD, which would make him almost 200 years old. It is possible Josephus was referencing Theodorus' grandfather, who he was named after, and it is simply my mistake. But I have read and reread these passages numerous times and cannot find a clearer explanation. This is yet another example of the flawed chronology of our civilization's history and our universally accepted calendar. Researchers theorize that the Temple of Zeus in Jerash was built over top of an older Roman fortress called Ariathus, mentioned by Josephus as Theodorus's stronghold, which itself was built over top of a cave that was the original place of worship in the Hellenistic period. The Temple of Zeus that we see today in Jerash was built in AD 60 and the upper temple complex in AD 163. Jerash is littered with many examples of this building over top phenomenon, such as a Byzantine church built in AD 530, where a mosaic floor with ancient Greek and Hebrew Aramaic inscriptions was discovered beneath the church's foundation, leading archaeologists to believe it was once a synagogue. But I was unable to find any other information about this synagogue or even when it may have been built. This has become a common theme in archaeological circles, as more and more ancient sites are further excavated. All across Eastern Europe, thousands of immense Neolithic tunnel systems have been unearthed in Turkey, Bavaria, Austria, and many other countries. Dating as far back as 12,000 years, these tunnels, as well as the recent discovery of the temple Gobekli Tepe in Turkey, are changing the way historians look at our civilization's past. So, is there more to be found under the ruins of Jerash? When we examine Jerash through Google Earth, it is hard to believe that 20 to 25,000 people once populated this relatively small city. At its peak, Jerash was 800,000 meters squared within its walls, which is less than one kilometer squared. Moreover, there are questions as to how such a small workforce would have accomplished the mind-boggling construction of these wondrous structures. If we consider that of the 25,000 inhabitants, half were women and children, that would leave around 12,000 people. Of that number, maybe half were able-bodied young men? And of that remaining 6,000, how many were masons and laborers? Half? The vast majority would have been merchants, politicians, and soldiers. Unless every able-bodied man was dedicated to the construction process, it would have taken a miracle to complete it all. Water into wine? Sand into city? We can see the two amphitheaters, the Hippodrome, the Temple of Zeus and Artemis, as well as the Cardo Maximus, Hadrian's Gate, and several smaller buildings and churches that were all purportedly built in the early to late part of the first millennium AD. But where are all the structures that would have housed the thousands of citizens that called Jerash their home? As you can see from the overhead view, once you remove the primary structures, there simply isn't enough space to accommodate that many people. This and the many minor ruins I saw leading up to Jerash leads me to believe that this section was for the royalty or political elite and the commoners lived outside the walls in this section. Therefore, either far less people lived in ancient Jerash 
or the city was much larger than historians claim. Archaeological excavations began in the 1920s and continue to this day. Jarash is the longest running archaeological site in the world, having been consistently excavated for the past 100 years. The most recent discovery was the unearthing of several priceless Roman statues in 2018. Excavations continue to this day, and it is anticipated that there is much more to find. The majority of what we see today in Jarash was built in the Common Era, but with these types of discoveries that date back before the Common Era, questions have been raised as to how long ago serious development began in Jarash. Will they one day uncover catacombs or yet another tunnel system that will once again rewrite history? Or have they already? We'll just have to wait and see. I have included a list of the 10 cities that made up the Roman Decapolis, of which Jarash was once a part of, as well as the supposed build dates for the well-known buildings and monuments of ancient Jarash, which you can find below in the description section. Thanks again for watching.